Have you ever wondered why when people say you can look up into space and actually be looking back in time? I mean, we know we cannot time travel, like go back to the past physically or go into the future physically, um, at least that we know of, we can't. But what does it mean that when you look into the sky, you're actually looking into the past? I mean, that seems kind of weird. So let's take a look at an example right here. If this is a person on Earth looking at a star that exists out there in space, and that's what the person sees, and if this star were 3,000 light years away from Earth, um, then we're going to see what happens when that star explodes and goes supernova. Now, let's just remember, one light year is the distance light travels in a year, which is 5.6 trillion miles away. So, uh, let's see, where are we at here? 1,000 million billion, we need another for a trillion. And this is miles. So, <clears throat> so a light year is a distance, a huge distance. Now imagine 3,000 of those. That's like even more enormous. 3,000 times 5.6 trillion miles. It's just immensely huge distance. And so um, as the light leaves the star, it takes 3,000 years to hit our eyes. So here's an example. It explodes now. For 3,000 years, this light wave goes through space. Now, notice when the person sees the star explode, um, here, let me just uh, pause and reset that. When they see the star explode, it, it goes up in a poof, and then he doesn't really see the star anymore. Let's watch that. Here's the star. He sees the star. Everything's fine and normal, but then poof. So while the star has already exploded, like right now, I mean, look, the star isn't even there. That's like the present, like in this guy's present, the star isn't even there. He sees the star that used to be there 3,000 years ago. So that's what we mean when we say we're looking into the past. We may not see what's really there. What's really there is, like in this case, uh, emptiness. Or, well, really there would be the leftover results of the star that exploded, like bits of gas and dust spewed all over and maybe a neutron star in the center or a black hole even but um, or a white dwarf if it was a lighter star a smaller star um, what was I saying I don't even remember um, but this guy oh yeah so he he doesn't even know though that the star has exploded because he's looking into the past he's looking 3,000 years in the past so let's watch when he suddenly notices well boom so he observes it um, 3,000 years later. The supernova occurred in 1,200 AD, and it's actually observed in 4,200 AD. So um, just for fun, let's uh, move him out here and uh, move the supernova to the far past, and now he goes supernova. Boom. So here's a supernova that occurred 7,600 years ago, or it'd be BC, so that would be 9,600 years ago. And it's then only observed in 1,000 BC. So again, a 6,600 year difference. So the guy was looking 6,600 years in the past. Why is this important? Well, because by looking at distant objects, we can see what happened in the more distant past. The closer the object is, the uh, the closer that the object is, we're looking at just a thousand years ago, let's say. But if we're looking at a very far away object, we're looking at long past events. So we can look at the early universe and study what the early universe looked like. And that's how astronomers get their uh, understanding of like what was in the beginning. You know, the theory of the Big Bang, all of that comes from looking far away at what early galaxies looked like.